All right, well, welcome to all of our participants and our panelists here for our week two food production virtual career panel. My name is Cassie Palsgrove. I'm the program administrator overseeing our career connections work at the Ohio Department of Education. And we've been thrilled to partner with Education Projects um, on this virtual series entitled Feed and Fuel Your Future, uh, focused on agriculture careers. So we are thrilled that this year or this week we have our food production focus uh, and hopefully you had a chance to join the virtual field trip and the virtual lesson. Uh, and today we'd like to bring you a virtual career panel. So we're very excited to have some special guests with us here today to talk with us a little bit about their career pathways and hopefully inspire some of our Ohio students out there to consider a career in food production as they think through their post high school plans. So I'm very excited to introduce our, our moderator for today's panel, Michelle Washington. She is a Career Connections Program Specialist with us at the Department of Education, and she's gonna be facilitating today's panel. So welcome, Michelle, and thank you very much for helping our panelists organize today. We appreciate it. Thank you, Cassie. And we're gonna go right ahead and start with the introductions. And uh, our first guest today is Andrew Gladden. Andrew, do you mind introducing yourself and your current role and uh, the company that you're working for? Sure. Thank you for having me. Um, my name is Andrew Gladden. I'm the uh, IT director here at Lucky Farmers, Inc. We're a cooperative um, in Northwest Ohio. Um, our main focus is uh, grain, agronomy, feed, and fuel. Thank you. And uh, we also have Jason Rump. Jason, do you mind introducing yourself? Absolutely. Thanks for having me. Um, my name is Jason Rump. I work for Sunrise Cooperative as a uh, agronomy solution advisor. And uh, we work with our cooperative works with, again, like the Andrew was saying, uh, grain and agronomy, energy, uh, precision type uh, products. So a little bit of array of everything for the farmer. Thank you. And uh, we have a student with us, Jakethia Johnson. Do you mind introducing yourself and your current major in the university you're attending? Absolutely. Thanks for having me, everyone. Um, I am Jakethia Johnson, and I attend the University of Kentucky College of Agriculture, Food, and Environment, studying agricultural economics. Thank you. And uh, we have with us uh, members of our planning committee, uh, and we have uh, Tracy Denninger. Tracy, can you introduce yourself? Sure. My name is Tracy Denninger. I'm an agriculture education program specialist uh, as a contractor to the Department of Education through the Southern Ohio Educational Service Center. Thank you. All righty, we're going to go and get started. Uh, Andrew Gladden, uh, can you tell us currently about your uh, role uh, and also as an IT manager and your educational training? Sure. Um, so my educational training first started, uh, um, I am a United States Marine Corps veteran. Um, I served in the United States Marine Corps, um, got out, went to college, got a degree in uh, computer networking and administration. Um, kind of my role here at, at Lucky Farmers, um, I've only been at Lucky Farmers for six years now, um, but I was brought in to help um, transform the company um, digitally. Um, I would say uh, six, seven years ago, we were behind the curve um, technology wise um, with some of the solutions that we we're not only using internal with our employees, but uh, external with, with our customers. And uh, in the last five years, uh, we've turned that around and uh, really made uh, technology the focus of, of what we're doing at Lucky Farmers. Great. And Jason, can you tell us uh, about your current role and uh, your training? Sure. So being an agronomy solution advisor, I work with farmers directly, creating farm plans, um, putting programs together. I um, also sell, sell the product also, uh, seed, fertilizer, and chemical. And then my journey to where I've gotten to uh, be where I'm at today. Um, I've been in this current role for five years. And previous to that, I did, uh, I accomplished a bachelor degree at Ohio State through agronomy and a minor in ag business. Wonderful. And Dakeithia, you're a current student. So can you tell us uh, how did you uh, 
uh, choose this as a career path? Um, so it actually took a lot of self-reflection. Um, I was in the FFA for two years in high school and I just knew that I wanted to be a doctor. So when I got to college, I actually was studying biology. Um, but shortly after I realized the science wasn't for me anymore. And so um, after self-reflection of being in the FFA and studying um, agricultural research and things like that at Fort Hayes Career Center, and my mentors being involved in the College of Ag, I was like, you know, maybe I should be over there. And so I looked through all of the majors and everything. And the only thing that didn't require science was business. And so I was like, you know what, I'm going to give it a try. And so I changed it. And I absolutely loved it from my first semester and being an ag econ. Um, so I stuck with it. Wonderful. Uh Andrew Glenn, can you tell us, uh, you know, most people think of agriculture, they don't think of uh, technology. Uh, can you tell us a little more about how uh, the role of technology plays a role in how your role uh, is impacting the agricultural industry? Sure. Um, and, and that's exactly right. I, you know, people don't think agriculture, IT, um, but uh, what Lucky Farmers is focused on the last five years is our external facing software to, um, to our members. Um, digitally, we can provide solutions um, to our members to help them manage their data, help them manage their on-farm data. And uh, so that's kind of the, the, the direction and the day-to-day -day things that, that I do is uh, uh, work with uh, our employees to, to help them um, with their growers and their data and data management. Um, also in IT, you know, there's phones, there's computers, there's networks and uh, um, all that stuff has to be managed, maintained and, and kept updated. Great. And then uh, Jason, uh, you had also mentioned uh, in terms of your role, uh, how does uh, on the ag business side, how does uh, your role in technology actually uh, intertwine? Sure, absolutely. Um, more and more every day, it seems like um, all these software programs for the combines and tractors, the GPS location, um, yield monitors, everything we do with planning to harvest is all done um, mapping wise through a piece of technology. And also with my role every day, I work with a, an ordering system where we don't turn in paper orders to our applicators anymore, what our jobs need done, it's all electronically. So um, a lot more efficiency is done that way too with more um, up-to-date maps all the time and uh, more seamless uh, progress when you go through with, the, with an order from paper and you know, draw on a hand-drawn map to a GPS location to a satellite image imagery of the map, you know, really gives the applicator a lot more precise location to start his job. Wonderful. And Jakeithia, you mentioned uh, how you came into choosing this as a career path. Uh, how did your uh, high school career at Fort Hayes, um, how did that impact and your teacher impact your career choice as well? Um, so my time at Fort Hayes, it was bioscience technology and I did like a lot of agricultural research, spent a lot of time in a lab um, doing different research projects and things like that. Um, and as far as like that and the teacher impacting me, it prepared me um, for, you know, on campus jobs. That was one thing that my teacher always said is that you're going to have on campus jobs and you know you may be able to get that laboratory position as an assistant learning these skills now and that's exactly what I did and so one of my great mentors was actually um, she was a she had a laboratory here at the university and I worked with her and what really helped me was the skills that I learned from being in bioscience technology and honestly taking the advice so far after um, my teacher had given it to me though, but she was actually right. And I was able to, to apply those skills to things that I needed and then essentially leading me into um, my major. Great. Now, Jason, you spoke uh, when we uh, had a prior conversation, uh, you spoke about your background in ag. Uh, can you tell us a little bit about that and how that impacted uh, your choices and also uh, how your 
uh, high school experience also had an impact on your career choice? Sure, absolutely. So I grew up in a really rural area, still live in a really rural area, um, you know, not really close to a big city or anything like that, small town. And all of my um, friends growing up farmed. Um, I really enjoyed the thought of it, the, the, the community around it. Um, I got to show um, cattle and hogs and 4-H when I was in high school um, through our FFA and um, through those classes and, and getting hands on with it. So getting that experience, um, wanting to know, or actually going through high school saying, well, you know, it's not fair for me that I don't get to farm because my family doesn't. So I kind of looked into um, a career path going into agriculture to try and um, boost that um, pathway that I wanted to go down. But um, that's how I, I kind of started. And then going through and, and like Michelle, we talked, talked about was my internship was what really got me excited on, on what I wanted to do then after my freshman year to kind of point me in the right direction of what career path I wanted to take. Great. Internships play uh, a great role um, in terms of uh, career decision it gives you uh, a preview of what that's like. Uh, and Andrew Gladden, your path was a little different because, uh, and you served in uh, the military and thank you for your service. Um, can you tell us how uh, that path and the training uh, in the military prepared you for your current role? Sure. Well, I think uh, technology um, has the ability to um, implement change in an organization. Um, so the technology is kind of the driving force and it doesn't matter if you're in the financial sector or the banking sector or the agriculture sector, um, everybody utilizes technology. And uh, I think uh, bringing that technology to Lucky Farmers, providing the leadership and uh, you know, making that change to an organization is, is what drew me to Lucky Farmers. Like I said, we were probably behind the curve in technology before, before I arrived. Um, and now we feel like we're leading in, in the technology. And when you mentioned that you're leading, uh, can you tell us uh, a little more specifics about how uh, technology helps uh, a farmer and helps in the agricultural and food production industry and how uh, it saves, um, what impact it really has on that? Sure. And in, in utilizing, utilizing the technology, um, we have the ability um, to really target nutrients in farms and fields, um, really in that field level um, with, our, with our precision ag. Um, so we're not wasting um, nutrients on the field, we're putting it where it needs to be, um, ut utilizing less fertilizer, but still gaining bushels. Um, and the technology and utilizing that technology and software to, to analyze all this stuff, we can show um, that, is, that is possible. And uh, that's, that's the kind of neat thing. Also utilizing the technology, um, we can help growers manage their data, but also help them manage their costs. Um, get them out of a mindset uh, of what's the price per bushel of corn today, instead of getting them, uh, what is my revenue per acre? on that on that field so technology has a great great role both both internal at lucky farmers and and external with the growers thank you uh jason as an agronomy solutions advisor can you tell us what does a day in the life of uh, your career looks like so really depends on the type of year um, time of year we are in um, what kind of jobs that need to be done if it's rained outside if it's nice out um, you know, in, a, in an in-season type situation where the crops are growing, my normal day is out in the field with the grower, um, spending time with them, putting orders in, um, diagnosing problems out in the field, just working with them hands-on um, to, to maybe look at some things that could be going wrong or go, could be going good, you know. There's always those good and bads. And, um, but th for that, for the in-season, that time, that's what it kind of looks like. When, you know, get kind of off-season, you could say, or harvest time as of right now, um, currently going through the seed selling time period. So we're putting a lot of seed orders in, getting seed bought for um, next year already and getting those orders placed. So um, kind of free freelance for me. Um, I don't have to report to anybody every day, which I love about the job. You know, I can just do what I need to do. Um, 
don't have to check into an office. Um, I get my own truck to, to drive to work every day and drive and do company things. And um, just a lot of um, freedom that was a, a, something definitely to learn when I first started, but has become something I quite enjoy now. And, and it really pushes me to, to do the best I can. And what skills uh, would you say are required for, uh, for a position as yours? I would say uh, organization is a huge, um, this, a, a huge uh, quality. Um, I think discipline's another one, and also just being have that drive to go. Um, it can be pretty easy for me if I really wanted to say, "Oh, today I'm just gonna sleep in and not do anything for work," and maybe answer a couple of phone calls. But you know, in the, in the long run, that doesn't really help me or the company or my growers. So it's got to be a lot of discipline to go out to the farm and, and stay organized on things to keep in front of them and be ready for them when they're ready. Great. And as we proceed, I just want to remind everyone, if you're an attendee and you have a question, feel free to add that to the chat and we'll be sure to address that. Um, Jakethia, as a college student and a senior, uh, what are your career goals? Um, for starters, I'm actually in the process of seeking full-time employment after graduation. Um, so with my major being so versatile and not being limited to just one thing in the agricultural sector, I'm seeking to maybe get experience maybe in marketing or sales or maybe even data analytics for the sector um, in the industry. But my ultimate long-term goal is to return back to Columbus, Ohio and help develop a agricultural curriculum that can be adopted by the public school system to assist students with urban farming and food equity. Now, uh, in our prior conversation, um, as we're, you know, we wanted to touch on this. I think Jane is on a call as well. And uh, there are a few minorities actually in this uh, industry. Uh, what, what is your vision for diversity in ag in the future? I think you spoke a bit about that. Yeah, my vision for diversity in the industry really just, the bigger picture is, I know that this is just going to sound really bland, but like really inclusivity, um, because I think that there's a gap between, you know, the inner city kids, which are usually urban kids, um, or Black Americans who don't have that connection to agriculture, um, and given the history of it, and then also, um, you know, agriculture just isn't rural. And so, you know, just just having that big inclusive picture, because um, I know for me, when I got into this, and I actually worked for the Office of Diversity in the college um, here at UK, um, there are only 440 students who are underrepresented minorities in this field, like in this industry, and that includes undergrad um, and grad students. Um, and then, you know, in the state alone, there are probably 193 African American farmers, that's less than 1%. And so just helping bridge the gap so that it actually is inclusive because whether or not they know about it, um, bringing awareness and helping them be knowledgeable, everybody needs food, shelter and clothing. And that's literally what this industry provides. Great, and we wish you the best in your future endeavors. I think you'll be fantastic. Um, Jason, uh, I wanted to kind of piggyback to you. Um, can you tell us what's the most rewarding part of your career? The most rewarding part of my career, I, that's a tough question, it's a loaded question. I really think, um, and the reason why I got into it was the um, personal relationship that I get with my customers. Um, that's really what I think gets me going every day and excited is um, gaining those new friendships and, and um, gaining su success on the farm. Um, whether, you know, of course, it's great to have a big sales number or do really good on, in the company, but um, in the long term, I, I just see myself as a, a really good advisor and, and co partner on the farm to really help these guys make the best, make, make the most money they can, do the best they can per acre. Great. And Andrew, what is the most rewarding part of your career in IT? Well, I think I think the uh, most rewarding part is um, taking the lead in the in the changing of the organization, that change management. Um, so, and 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 working with all of our employees and the, and the members that we work with, and uh, you know, it uh, 
it's a challenge every single day, um, but uh, providing that, that leadership for them and um, listening and uh, um, taking everything into account uh, is, uh, is very rewarding. Great. Now, Jakethia, you mentioned the various uh, roles that you potentially can get into. Uh, I, I know you didn't quite pinpoint them. If there's a student that's considering or uh, they're not quite sure, can you tell us, based on the co coursework, internships that you've experienced, what are some of the roles uh, that uh, a potential student can look into or consider in ag? Um, they're various. Um, so for ag econ, you know, you have those sales associates with multiple companies in the industry, maybe Corteva, Land Lakes, John Deere. Um, and then you also have territory managers who for in specific, um, Corteva, where you run an entire region. And like Jason said, you build connections with those farmers and those producers, um, consulting with them, providing them, whether it be seed specialties, crop protection, pest management, um, and then you can also go into data analytics because you have that statistic and mathematic um, background and ex expertise or experience and work for USDA in national agricultural statistics, if you'd like. Um, there's so much that you can do. You can go into foreign policy, um, international trade. There's, there's so much um, in the industry, um, but, you know, it's just about really finding out what you like because your coursework is going to cover majority of it and everything, um, it really boils down to your internship and finding out what you like and what you don't like and what you can see yourself doing. And that's a very good point because that's how you pretty much figure it out. Thank you so much for sharing. Uh, Jason, what's the most challenging part uh, of your career? Um, I'd say the most challenging part would would not even i think be the material i think for myself i like to learn the material and it's 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 what i enjoy um i guess for my position it's it's hardest to gain customers i mean that's what my goal is 90 percent of my day well i wouldn't say 90 percent, maybe 75 percent of my day is is targeted in growth on um, new things to quantify and how to help guys do better to gain more sales to help them um, grow a better crop. So just a uh, kind of introduction of new products might be a good title for it for um, majority of customers might be the toughest thing I get to do because, you know, you're not, you're going on the farm and telling them something different than they haven't heard or have heard and asking them really to try, try something. And this is their livelihood. This is what they're passionate about. So, you know, you really don't want to let them down or let them fail. Now, how do you overcome that? Because uh, sometimes it's hard to persuade people. So how do you uh, encourage a farmer that maybe has been used to doing things for 20 years a certain way? So it really depends on, um, on their personality and on how they like to perceive data or perceive information. Um, a lot of sales training behind that on, on selling to different profiles, uh, personality traits, and just, you know, be, not letting them know, I think the best way to do it is let them know that you're not there just to sell a product. And some guys are out there to do that. And there's some guys I work with that are out there to do that. Um, but I, my motive always get, was going into this position was I'm here to um, help them do the best they can. And if I if they succeed, I'll succeed. Um, so, it, and most of the time that shines through, I think, and has really helped me and just staying positive. Um, a lot of times is, is a 90% of it too, because things can let you down, but just staying upbeat and positive has really, really helped me out. Great. Now, I think Tracy has a question in the chat. Tracy, if you want to get off of mute and ask that question. I can. I was uh, targeting that question specifically to Andrew of what specific technologies that he is seeing consuming the largest market share among, amongst your uh, customer request or use for technology? Sure. Um, it, it is, um, I guess, farm data management, um, a, a technology solution that allows the farmer, the agronomist, the retailer, um, insurance companies, um, financial institution, 
all to work under one platform. Um, it's that data analytics. It's um, um, having that having that uh, your data in one place. Um, so many times we see, um, you know, we have data in one system or data in another system. It's uh, it's technology that'll bring all that together, so it makes a, a broader picture of what's going on um, in that grower's operation. And Andrew, while we're on you, what's the most challenging part of your job? Well, the most challenging part, I think, is um, leading that change um, and recommending the the right solutions at, at the right time for what what we're trying to accomplish um you know change change isn't easy and and when you change somebody's process or their procedures on how they do something um people get frustrated and and uh but uh good listening skills um understanding um their jobs um how it impacts them um i think uh is challenging sometimes and uh, but I think if everybody understands what the bigger picture and the broader picture is of, of what we're trying to accomplish um, everybody usually comes comes on board pretty quick and that's great because you're actually uh, between Jason and yourself you've listed quite a few employability skills uh, that's quite important uh, for students to be able to attain uh, to be able to function and it takes listening, it takes being empathetic, it, it comes from a place uh, where you are able to work in, in a team setting. So uh, thank you for pointing those uh, traits out, quite important. Uh, Jakethia, um, as a current student, what advice would you give to uh, students that are considering um, a career in ag? Um, advice that I would give to students considering ag would definitely be to know that this is something that you want to do. And like Andrew and Jason have been saying, you know, really hone in on those skills um, and make sure that you understand that what you're doing is going to have an impact, um, whether it's big or small. Um, and then make sure that you wake up with a fire in your belly to actually change the industry. Um, one thing that I always say is like, there's no growth in comfort. Um, so make sure that you're uncomfortable and being strategic of how you're going to impact um, the industry. So I will really hone in on how you're going to impact and those skills that you need to do so. Absolutely. Without having uh, a purpose and realizing uh, that you're in an industry to make a change. Uh, it's, it's hard to wake up if you have no purpose. So thanks for pointing that out. Um, what advice would you give to educators as a student and a student that has gained so much from uh, your teachers that have impacted your decision? What, what advice would you give to uh, educators? Um, as far as educators, I would say that I want them to wake up with a fire in their belly too, um, to actually have the patience to work with these students. Um, from high school until now, I really think and reflect back on my transition and my thought process. Um, I was always so scatterbrained. I never knew what I wanted to do, but it was really the patience of my educators and who had those conversations with me um, and flushed out my ideas and thoughts and then, you know, just supported me by doing so, whether that was talking to me when I needed it, um, helping me figure out what would come next um, because essentially the educators have been where you are before. Um, so just making sure that you really are a support system and that they can utilize you as a resource. Wonderful. Uh, Jason, same question for you because I know uh, your educators also had an impact on your career. Yeah, I think it, I want to echo that same concept. I think that they, we have to wake up um, with the fire in our belly. I think we got to really wake up and want this and and educators, um, it stems from them. I mean, you, I think the, the student learns from the teacher and ultimately, and if they're, if the excitement's not there to start with, it's going to be a slow process just to get the ball rolling. But um, I think, you know, and, and there's been some different uh, professors and different mentors in my life has really changed me and my ways. 
Um, and there's one mentor I'm working with right now. It's just, um, has really changed the way I look at things and, and his drive has really pushed me to, uh, become a different person, you know, on and off the farm and in person and working and not in work. So, and just, uh, those, those professors and teachers and mentors just got to keep pushing. Um, and it'll come back. I think we got to feed off each other to keep this ball rolling. Great. Uh, Andrew Glennon, where do you see the role of technology uh, in terms of uh, expanding in the ag industry? Well, I think uh, as, as new software, as new tools um, continue to be developed, um, you know, it, it's, it's unlimited on what, what technology can do to help the agriculture industry. I think the uh, next biggest thing coming is, uh, is artificial intelligence. Um, as long as we can manage the data and have have good, um, clean data, um, you can start using analytics um, from past data to present data to, to future data, and and really, um, you know, gain more with with less. And uh, that's that's kind of what everybody's opportunity is: keep our costs down and produce more. And uh, technology really really can help with that. And when we spoke earlier, Andrew, you spoke about opportunities that are available uh, to those that are interested in uh, a career in, um, in technology or IT in agriculture. Uh, can you share a little bit about that? Sure. Um, we uh, obviously we have internships and offer, offer internships, um, but uh, some of the career opportunities are uh, um, you know, since we've we've turned all digital and uh, streamlined our processes and uh, have automation facilities now, um, the the high school students, the college students that are coming in, are taking on more of a technology role in their day to day operations. They're they're running a liquid control automation facility or a, a dry automated facility, or you know, they have iPads in their machines. They're getting uh, electronic work orders, and uh, you know, so technology really, really drives home, you know, um, for anybody that is going into agriculture, uh, whatever you want to do, technology is the key. Great. And uh, what, what final nugget would you want to leave with students that well, are interested in this career field? Well, I, I, I think um, the biggest thing is, is agriculture is not a nine to five job. Um, I learned that really quick, not coming from agriculture. Um, so when you're, when you're working or if you're not working, be present. Um, people are relying on you and uh, you can make a difference in, in, in the way the organization um, operates. Uh, so it's, it's exciting. Sorry, I was on mute. Jason, uh, what nugget would you want to leave with students looking at this? A um, uh, couple of nuggets I would like to give students would be apply for scholarships. That's something I didn't do when I was forward thinking enough of what I was going to be doing in, in, through college. That's a really big help. Um, do some internships, do some job shadowing, really just see what your uh, interest is, you know, not only just learning the aspect of the job, but actually go out and shadow somebody and experience it. Um, and really just, uh, and, and like Andrew said, it, it is not a, a, a eight to five job by no means, and it's a lifestyle, but getting into it, um, it's it's awesome. I mean, I, I, I don't mind picking up the phone at you know, if it's six, seven o'clock at night, or if it's a Saturday morning or Sunday, and you know, if we, if we got to get something done, you're being depended on and know that, but in that sense too, it's very uh, self-rewarding because, you know, they need you and, and just as much as you need them. Great. And Jakethia, uh, what, what nugget would you like to leave with students? Um, I talked a little bit about this earlier, but really 
be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Um, like Andrew and Jason said, it's not a nine to five, it's a lifestyle and you need to do these internships and job, job shadowing, but you have to be willing to do so. Um, like I said earlier, there's no growth and comfort. So if you don't try these things, then you aren't gonna really personally and professionally develop. Um, so be comfortable with being uncomfortable. That's great advice. Um, we're going to go ahead and wrap up. Are there any questions uh, of any of our attendees? Okay. I do see there's a comment. Someone said, awesome advice. Be comfortable with being uncomfortable. Absolutely. And so we do want to uh, go ahead and wrap up, but we want to share with you some other events that will be taking place next week. Cassie? Absolutely. So I mentioned earlier that we've been partnering with the Education Projects group on a Feed and Fuel Your Future Career series. All of these opportunities are virtual. Uh, so if you check out the Department of Education's page at education.ohio.gov and search for events and resources, you'll find the lineup for next week. So check back around this time next Thursday for our week three virtual career panel. Uh, but on behalf of the department and education projects, thank you all so much for donating your time today to share your stories with Ohio's students. Again, if you're an educator who's watching this recording or a, t or a student who's watching this recording, we encourage you to reach out to us to ask any questions of our panelists and we'll get you in connection. Um, that email is careerconnections at education.ohio.gov and we'd love to hear any feedback you have um, or if you have any questions that you'd like to ask our panelists here. So thanks everybody so much for joining today and we really appreciate it. And hopefully we'll see you all back next week for our week three series. Thank you. Thanks, all. Michelle. Great job today, everyone.